Welcome, one and all, to the mystical world of Felbar. Adventures abound throughout this realm, and we appreciate the opportunity to regale you with some stories from these trails. These accounts are all based on actual RPG experiences that occurred within Adventures in Felbar. Some of these tales may be for mature audiences, while others may be for very immature audiences. We now present the sage Mikas Tumo from Tamel, also known as the Bard of Felbar. Welcome to session Fartuk-59. The previous episode featured our group headed out into the wilderness to explore the great land of Fartuk. As they reached their furthest point yet, the party stopped by the river to let their horses drink. A watchful eye from the ranger spotted some tracks and uncovered what appeared to be an adolescent owlbear. Fargus, Lady Irena, and Cave Silvertongue were puzzled as the very nature of the owlbear was one of magical creation. It was the wisdom of the waif that uncovered that nature could not be beaten. As Bolger the sailor messed with the short creature, the parental owlbear appeared and was not amused. The group barely escaped with their lives and continued east. We rejoined them several days later. Who would have thought we would have seen something by now? mused Cave the Bard. The others agreed, but Sister Elaine pointed out that travel through the mountains had been going slow. With the sun setting, the group opted to pull out their traveling tent and set up for the night. Karina the Waif and Fargus Stoutheart headed out to pick off some small game for food while the others settled in. Lady Irena and Sister Elaine were nervous and scouted out what lay ahead as Bolger and Cabe finished prepping the camp. We can go around the bend here and I'll be happy, pointed out the cleric of Dilo. The mage agreed and made their way around a winding trail strewn with rocks. The pair surmised that the ground that they were on may be unstable due to falling rocks, but they continued forward nonetheless. After a mile, they reached a beautiful vista overlooking a lush valley with a creek running through it. After remarking about the beauty that lay ahead of them, Lady Irena leaned forward. See something? asked Sister Elaine. The elven woman confirmed that her keen eyesight had picked up something. After studying it for several minutes, she reported that there was a group of possibly humans in the Vale below. She, they appeared to be making camp, but the distance and lighting prohibited her from garnering any more information. The cleric peered forward, but couldn't even see movement. Chuckling, she pointed out that the group wasn't going to be a threat to them, thanks to the distance and elevation. Lady Irena agreed, but pointed out that the rest of the group should be told of their find. The two ladies returned to the campsite as a green Fargus and Karina returned with a pheasant and three rabbits. We'll eat well tonight, my friends, remarked a very proud ranger. There is a great deal of game on this mountain, and Karina has picked up great skill of bow. The waif blushed from the compliment and stated that she was only responsible for one of the rabbits and had lost three arrows. Bulger pointed out that everyone was new at things and at some point she would improve. The mage and cleric filled in the rest of the group on what they had observed. Cabe agreed that if the other party was making camp, then they were certainly no threat at this time. After a delicious frontier meal, the group made up a guard schedule and each took turns sleeping and taking a watch. The night passed uneventfully with Bulger and Sister Elaine waking everyone up. As Fargus was roused from his slumber, he found the cleric violently shaking him back to the world. What? 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 What's the problem? barked the angry human, but his attitude softened as he saw a look of concern in the woman's eyes. I think there's a problem, she said. Fargus quickly got his gear on and exited the tent, finding the others outside looking around. After exiting, an acrid smell filled his nostrils and the ranger checked the campfire, which had already been put out. Concerned looks from the ensemble were shared. Cabe gave a knowing nod to the human who ordered the camp to be broken. Looking to Lady Irena, he requested to be shown the valley where the two females saw the people. The pair did a quickly paced travel around the side of the mountain where they came upon billows of dark smoke. Peering through the haze, it was evident that a fire had raged through the veil, consuming the lush fauna. Fargus' human eyes had trouble with the smoke and he covered his mouth. Muttering to the elven mage, he asked if she could see anything. Her eyes, darting between the tendrils of haze, nodded her head to the affirmative. To 
Did those idiot explorers let the fire get out of hand? He asked, but received a negative nod from Lady Arena. An hour later, the entire group was on the floor of the valley. The charred grass and trees were still smoking and hot to the touch. The creek was littered with ash, but allowed the horses to keep their hooves cool. Bulger, Karina, and Peepers, the axe beak, kept a watch on the mounts as the other four surveyed the damage. Got more arrows over here, exclaimed the bard. The four party members each had weapons drawn as they reviewed the scene in front of them. The explorers had apparently been waylaid in the night by human raiders. A charred, dead orc with a blade shoved through his skull showed that the other group didn't go without a fight. Holding their noses, the group surveyed the gruesome campsite and reported no survivors or loot to speak of. Fargus then did a full investigation of the damage and reported that the explorer's tents were apparently set ablaze which ignited the rest of the valley floor. Lady Arena pointed out that the creek was low and it may not have rained for a while, leading to the dangerous conditions. Sister Elaine made a religious motion and announced there wasn't even enough left to give a proper burial with the bard, pointing out that some of the corpses appear to have been mutilated. The ranger picked up the exit trail that led south and surmised that the trail was quite old, so the humanoid raiders likely attacked in the middle of the night and are now long gone. As the quartet returned to the mounts, Karina spotted something and pointed it out to the group. A small corpse of charred trees surrounded a pair of rocks that appeared to have been milled. The group moved closer to investigate and assumed that the fauna had covered the stones that were obviously not natural. As Bulger stepped between the two stones, he pointed out that he had found something. Gently leaning over the hot rocks, the group spotted what the sailor had found. An opening in the ground had apparently been covered by a wooden slab that was burned away. Stone stairs lead down into the darkness, and the gnome exclaimed, It's a dungeon! We close out this episode now and give you our thanks for listening. Please subscribe to this podcast, and don't forget to follow us on Twitter, at The Bards Podcast. For everyone in Adventures of Philbar, thanks for listening.